Welcome to Streams of Income with self-help author Ryan Rieger. For the next hour, you'll hear proven methods for how to live the multiple income streams dream. Ryan is passionate about helping others discover their gifts and start their own business. He's published five books, and his courses and group coaching programs have changed the lives of thousands of students all over the world. Ryan's books include Private Label, The Easy Way, Finding Your Grace Place, and his latest, Streams of Income. And now, here's your host, Ryan Rieger. Hey guys, welcome back to the Streams of Income radio show. I'm your host, Ryan Rieger. And in today's episode, we're chatting with my friend and owner of Lake Growth Financial, Mark Willis. He is a recurring guest. He's been on two other times, episode 10 and episode 32. Uh, He has a strategy that Melaine, my wife and I use uh, to grow our income, to save for retirement, not that I'll ever retire, but uh, because I love what I do and I I can't imagine uh, not doing it anymore. Um, But uh, it's a strategy that we use, many of my students use. Um, So imagine if you are an online seller, for example, and you want to invest in some inventory, you have some inventory uh, that you want to put some money into and and sell online, Uh, you could take money right out of your checking account, savings account, whatever you have. Um, But rather, what if you had a an account that you could pull it from and you're earning money on that money that you pulled from as if you never removed it in the first place. So in essence, you're double dipping. So you have, you take that money, you're still earning interest on it, and then you invest it in inventory that you sell for a profit. So it's super cool. Many of my students use this strategy. Uh, I'll let Mark explain this in my interview with him. But if you want more information, uh, you can get a free analysis with him or one of his trusted advisors. Just go to streamsofincome.com forward slash fire your banker. Streamsofincome.com forward slash fire your banker. There will also be a link in the show notes to this episode. So here's my interview with Mark. Mark, welcome back to Streams of Income Radio. So glad to have you. I think this is number two or three, maybe three. Hey, we'll make it a we'll make it a three, Pete. Man, I'm so glad <laughs> to be with you again, Ryan. Man, thank you so much for having me on your show. Of course. So, with what we talk about usually together, you are clearly the expert. I'm learning as we go. Um, what do you got for us today? Well, I have just a few questions I'd love to share uh, with your uh, listening audience. Uh, you know, I, I think these are in some ways just uh, thought provoking mm-hmm. idea questions that help people sort of think a little different yeah. in the midst of financial turmoil and calamity. Uh, we're faced with really unprecedented times financially, uh, but there are some, I think, questions uh, that can help us kind of think different about the trap that we're in. If we feel like we're mm-hmm. trapped, oftentimes it's because of the questions we're asking. I believe that questions are honestly the lens we see the world through. You know, Jesus Mm. asked more questions than I think he gave answers to in some ways. He he certainly is the answer. But the questions he asked brought people to a deeper understanding and awareness and belief about the nature of reality. Mm -hmm. So let me just think carefully with your audience about like a few questions. I guess that's what I'd love to spend some time with. Do it. Yeah. Okay, so here they are. And you just stop me if any of these sound like you want to talk further about them, all right? Okay. Um, what if there was a way to guarantee that you would never lose any money? Mm. Would you want to know how to how that? Yeah, could I don't be think my audience cares about that at all. Yeah. <laughs> they, we're all. I'm teaching them to make so much money that they, it's okay if there's some that goes out the back end that they don't, don't know the about. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, clearly, absolutely. So, what if because you didn't lose any money, you could access the money every time something bad happened and take advantage of the opportunity? rather than just being hurt by it. Mm. I mean, wouldn't that be an awesome strategy? I mean, think about yeah. it this way, Ryan. I mean, since the year 2000, mm-hmm. the stock market has crashed by 40, 50% three times, wow. if you count this year. Mm-hmm. And you know, if that has happened three times in just the last 20 years, mm-hmm. how many more times might it happen over our yeah. lifetime? So yeah. you know, another wow. question I've been really thinking about is, hey, what if you could do everything I've been talking about so far while reducing or even completely eliminating income tax liability. Mm. I mean, wouldn't that be a spectacular strategy, (laughs) right? Absolutely. And you can make plans for exactly how much you needed to give the IRS uh, instead of them telling you what you owed them every year. (laughs) I like it. 
Now, what if, you know, here's a surprise, I guess, as I was thinking about this list of questions today, you know, here's a surprise. What if you could use those same dollars that you're using for financial retirement success for protection as well, mm -hmm. you know, for your family? I mean, wouldn't that be a more effective and efficient use of money than mm -hmm. what you're currently doing? Yep. You know, like if you yes. had an example, if you ever had like a critical illness, like a heart uh -huh. attack or a stroke or cancer, God forbid, wouldn't it be amazing if you could use the same values in that strategy mm -hmm. to survive or transition your life without all the money being des destroyed? Yes. And even yeah. if you died, you know, using that for your family's purposes, replenishing your family so mm -hmm. that they wouldn't have to struggle along mm -hmm. uh, and leaving it to them income tax-free. I mean, wouldn't that be beneficial to know now um, so you could use <laughs> that money for any reason and not waste a single cent of it Right. on, on uh, taxes or market risk. Love it. Sounds uh, good. <laughs> I'm, com I'm coming around the horn heading to, to home here, but like, here's an even crazier question. I think even a better surprise. What if you needed like 90% of all the wealth in your life to go toward long-term care, mm. but it was all locked up in your 401ks and your IRAs, your house equity. Mm -hmm. You know, I heard today, uh, I heard, actually, I was reading today, the U.S. Commerce Bureau says uh, the average American who is 65 years old has uh -huh. a net worth of 194000 bucks. Wow. Which, oh my I mean, that's cool that it's six figures, but how long is one hundred ninety four grand going to really last us, right? Um, yeah. And, and that's also, actually, you just said net worth. That's, there's a difference between net worth and cash in the bank. That's right, man. Yeah. So out of 194000 a lot of that is our home equity. Yeah. which is not exactly cash in the bank. You're right. No. In fact, if you get rid of home equity, our net worth liquid outside of our home is about 44 grand. Oh my gosh. At age 65. What? Wow. So not only is that going to be difficult to cover our life expenses in retirement and all the things that we might want to do after age 65, since we're all living longer these days, but a good chunk of us, 70% of couples are going to need long-term care. Mm -hmm. you know, either husband or wife. Now, what if you had all of your, all the things that we've been talking about so far in our questions, but what if you needed 90% of the value in that strategy that we've been talking about to pay for long-term care while you were alive? And what mm -hmm. if you preferred to be taken care of at home rather than a long-term care facility? Mm -hmm. Because all the problems that long-term care facilities are currently having, I mean, wouldn't it be great if you were in control of where you spent your final days with integrity mm -hmm. and dignity, yep. right? And then after you pass away, all of that money that you were using could be then sent to your family income tax-free for your mm -hmm. family, your charity, your business. Mm -hmm. And if you didn't need the money and you passed away peacefully in your sleep, all that cash <laughs> gets left to your family income tax-free without wasting a cent. I think yeah. that's so huge. So um, my last little comment or question I'll throw out here and then I'll hush and I'd love to get your thoughts on it <laughs> is, you know, finally, like, what if you could use the values that we've been talking about, your money going into certain financial vehicles to provide an income tax-free retirement stream of income mm -hmm. that you could use to supplement everything else Ryan talks about on his show, uh, oh. your current retirement income, your business income, without adding any additional taxes. And mm -hmm. you know, when you're done getting all the income at the end of the day, wouldn't it be wonderful if you could leave it to your family or mm -hmm. business or charity income tax free. Yep. So those are some of my. Some <laughs> I of don't my think questions. there's anybody listening. Is like, uh, no, nah, I don't think I want that. <laughs> so you know, obviously, we've we've talked about this strategy before, but I think sometimes just asking questions about like, what is it you want your money to do for you, is one of the key questions. Um, yeah. And if we don't start with the right question, we'll end with the wrong answer. Yeah. You know, um, someone once said, uh, you are perfectly designed to achieve the results you're currently achieving, <laughs> you know? <laughs> right. So I'm thinking about that with my like health and uh -huh. my spiritual mm. life and my marriage. I'm thinking, Hey, I'm perfectly designed to achieve the results I'm currently achieving. Yeah. So if I want to change my results, I have to change my approach. Mm -hmm. right? I have to grab a different club out of the bag. Uh, yeah. Get the ball out of the sand trap than I would on the putting green. Right. So, you know, which of those right. questions or what other questions come to mind as you're thinking about like 
the what ifs. If you could just mm. kind of break free and make this your own, Ryan, uh, what are some what if questions for money? Yeah, I mean, um, well, I like to, because I know where we're headed with this and we've had you on the show before, you know, what if essentially you could, uh, you know, the double dip, I, I think that's a big thing for folks in our, uh, you know, in the legends group. So what I'm talking about there, guys, if this is your first time you're hearing this stuff is, you know, um, if I need, I see a, a deal on inventory or whatever it is, I can pull money out of an account that I have. And that it's like, I never pulled it out of that account. So if I I have a savings account, for example, and I have 10 grand in there and I pull it all out to buy inventory. Well, that's great because I'm going to earn interest on that inventory or I'm going to earn a return on Amazon or eBay or wherever I put that money. But that savings account has been depleted. What if you could still earn your, your interest on the money that you pulled out? I know it sounds crazy, but that's exactly what we're doing every single day here. I mean, Ryan, I mean, do you know anything else in the world that can do <laughs> what we've just been talking about? I mean, do you know a more effective or efficient way to use your money for everything we've just been describing? No, I haven't found any. If, and if, uh, if there is, I, I trust you to tell me. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be happy to find out. Right. I'll, I'll be the first to tell you for sure. <laughs> I mean, if, if any of us think that some of these events that we're all experiencing in 2020, if we all think these might continue in the future, I mean, do you want to be in control of what happens or do you want banks, Wall Street, the Internal Revenue Service, the government, nursing homes, banks, hospitals, mm -hmm. do you want them to be in control of what happens to you? I mean, I there so. are only a few key decisions we can make in our life mm -hmm. that really matter. Mm -hmm. you know? There's only three hinges on that big door over there. Uh -huh. uh, but they are what swing the biggest, you know, openings in our house, right? So yeah. the, find the hinges in your financial life and make right. those the leverage points. Exactly. Either leverage will work against you or you can use leverage for your advantage. Right. And that's what Ryan, you've been talking about is yeah. the power of leverage. Yeah. Yeah. And so you just essentially, that's what the, the big part of the reason that folks do what we're, we're talking about here is uh, that they can make their earn money earn double interest essentially so it's mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah yeah i mean we're already in the banking business right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so we're just sitting on the wrong side of the banker's desk right you know <laughs> we got the wrong guy or gal behind the desk we need to sit behind the banker's desk and and figure out that this is something that they've done for generations in fact mm -hmm. i was reading the book ryan uh the book is called debt the first five thousand years Wow. Uh -huh. Talk about a title, right? David Graeber, great, cool, cool. Book. Uh -huh. um, but banking is like, is one of those hinges, I think, in our financial life. Mm -hmm. and either we keep control of it uh, or we outsource it. Mm -hmm. And I've seen the effects of banking. Uh, it's, it's what causes uh, income inequality. I think it's what causes a lot of the strife among mm -hmm. uh, our country right now. Mm -hmm. I think it's um, the root cause of a lot of the, you know, problems that we see. It's why it's why people have to work 80 hours a week instead mm -hmm. of 40. Right. Um, I mean, if if the average American, according to U.S. Commerce Bureau, the average American spends about 37 cents on the dollar just servicing their debts. Mm. So if you wow. can get rid of that mess and let banking come back in the home, in the family, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and all of a sudden you've freed up a spouse, a spouse can come home, you know, or yeah. you can start working 20 or 30 hours a week uh, instead yeah. of 50, 60, 70. Right. Right. Um, so again, it, it, we have a choice. Do you want to be in control mm -hmm. or are you ready to hand it off to somebody else who would prefer to be in control? Mm -hmm. Cause if you let banks control where your money is, they're going to win every mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. uh, if you control where your money lives, you're going to win every time. Mm -hmm. So it's all about who to, you know, deciding whether or not you're going to be in control and how to gain control. And I think it comes down to questions, mm -hmm. starting with those questions. Um, mm -hmm. if, if you talk to a financial advisor or financial professional who says, here's exactly what you should do with your money, um, <laughs> I'd say run, don't walk. <laughs> right. Um, but start with your own questions, you know, like asking some of those questions we just started with or mm -hmm. creating your own. What do you want your money to do for you? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I remember our first conversation, it was, um, you know, you, you were asking me tons of questions because you're trying to figure out, you know, what are we trying to accomplish? What are our financial goals? And, you know, then you 
basically worked out a plan that made sense for us and is unique to us. Um, but you had to have those answers first. So it's good. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I know there's, there's a lot of places you can put your money. I, I think there's over 450 financial products. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, that would be everything from savings accounts to annuities, to real estate, to dynastic trusts. Mm-hmm. But, and, and if you combine those two together, like if you put uh, Wall Street and real estate together, that's called a REIT and that's even more. Mm-hmm. You know, so you can multiply this out into the millions of different places you could possibly put your money. Right. Um, but, you know, from your savvy listeners might realize that what we've been describing is a very new, very modernized form of whole life insurance. Mm-hmm. Everything that we just described in this episode points to that one particular vehicle. Now, I don't mm-hmm. know if that's a good fit for everybody, but mm-hmm. uh, we, we refer to them as bank on yourself type policies. Mm-hmm. And I know, Ryan, you and I have looked at that and you've implemented those strategies in your own yeah, financial life. For sure. And uh, you recommend it to a lot of the people who are in your uh, masterminds and the mm-hmm. groups that you help lead. Mm-hmm. Um, I think in part, it's a stream of income for two reasons. And I'll, I'll briefly mention this. One, you can use that cash value in the life insurance as a bucket of cash that you could use for your inventory, mm-hmm. for your kid's college, for your you know vacations, for your mm-hmm. kitchen remodel, for your real estate investments. And you're mm-hmm. right. When you borrow against the policy, it continues to grow as if you had not taken the loan out, which Mm -hmm. is like the unicorn in the financial universe. It's pretty cool. Yeah. At the same time, it also begins, especially as you really start to see the power of the policy grow and accumulate, Mm -hmm. it starts to generate um, a fairly substantial stream of income. Uh, There's Mm -hmm. a dividend paid on whole life policies. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't realize this, but those dividends have been paid every single year without fail for over a century. Mm. Uh, I don't know many, in fact, I can't think of any stocks that have paid a dividend for a century. Uh, You know, I can't think of any. In fact, I was looking it up. There's a group of stocks called the dividend aristocrats. Uh These are like super long paying dividend stocks. Like, um, you know, like um, pick pick a few, like uh, Uh AT&T. There's about 50 of them out there. Okay. No, no stock really has paid a dividend without fail for more than about 40 or 50 years at the Mm -hmm. longest. So, you know, the life insurance companies that we work with have been paying those dividends Mm -hmm. since the last pandemic in 1918. Wow. Which is pretty cool. (laughs) That is cool. Yeah. If I could boil it down to, for everybody that's listening, if this is their first time, it's just, um, there's so many different ways to put your money. It's just like what we talk about in my groups, there's so many different ways to do, this business. You could walk into a Walmart, find products to flip. You could do this online. You could go to garage sales, estate sales, thrift stores, and there's not a right or wrong there. It depends on what you're trying to accomplish. Do you want to invest in the stock market or real estate or all these other options that are out there? I would probably say, well, do what you want as far as that's concerned, but open a policy first and take that. So if I was going to do real estate and you talk about this on your show, um, not your average, not your ordinary not financial, your financial podcast. Not your average financial podcast. So you, you pointed me to some episodes about real estate. And so let's say I want to invest in real estate. So let's say if I put I have 50 grand that I want to have as a down payment for a, a rental property. Well, I can pull out 50 grand from a savings account and put it in there. Or I can pull out 50 grand from a, a bank on yourself policy and put it into my real estate. And that 50 grand is still generating that, that dividend as if I never took it out of the policy. Plus you have life insurance too. And that's something I remember our conversations we've had before. It's like, you're telling me about how the, how the policies are doing and they're like, Oh, but also it's life insurance that you, you have. It's like, that's almost like an afterthought to me. Um, but it's important, you know, we have a son, so it's uh, nice to have that too. But I look at it as a savings account in a way. Um, cause that's really how it is. And anytime I want access to that money, I mean, it's not as fast as, you know, uh, going down to the bank, but usually about a week to two weeks, I could have a disbursement if I need it for anything. And so just boiling it down for the person who's, you know, simple like me, you know, it's like I'm earning an interest in both places. Yeah. Yeah. If you, if you get that concept uninterrupted, never ending, nothing we can really do to stop it. Compound growth is Mm -hmm. truly uh, an unbeatable concept. Mm -hmm. Einstein calls it the eighth wonder of the world for a reason. 
yeah. you know um and it's it's really kind of it's it's kind of a cool concept and again yeah if, if you start with the wrong question like how, how can i get a better rate of return on my mutual funds that's mm-hmm. going to lead you down a path toward a certain answer yeah. but if you ask yourself do i want some of the uh, questions that we asked earlier you know is there anything else in the world that can do what we've been talking about today i don't mm-hmm. know of it i right. tell you if i found out believe me anything is easier than talking about life insurance to a group of people. I promise you that. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, so, you know, again, come down to, you know, the simplest thing is like, where do you, where do you see your life headed? What do you want your money doing for you? Cause it's mm-hmm. either going to work for you or you're going to work for it. And right. Ryan, your show streams of income and everything you focus on with your groups and your learning communities and your masterminds, how do we get our money working for us? Mm-hmm. I heard it said, um, when you're an employee, your money is your boss. Yeah. Even if the boss has, you know, a toupee down the street, down the, down the hall from you, mm-hmm. your real boss is your money. Yeah. Right. Mm. But when you're the boss, your money is your employees. So go tell your money what mm. to do and they'll come working for you and they'll bring you some recruits too. That's by the good. Way. That is good. Wow. So guys, if you're interested, uh, Mark uh, has free consults. uh, He'll get on a quick call. He also has a team of people. Um, He gets busy. And so he has other folks that do this too, but uh, just go to streamsofincomeradio.com. You'll see uh, the show notes. So we're working on an actual new page for this um, where we can send people, but that, that link will be in the show notes where you can get more information, get on a quick call with him to see if this is a fit for you. But if you sell online, you're doing this business that we talk about all the time on this show, then there's no reason not to look this direction because essentially you can take that same money that you would have invested in Amazon products and it'll still be earning interest for you while you're using it to, to build your business. So it's just, for us, it's been an, a huge, huge benefit. Ryan, you're oh. rocking it. I love the show. Keep up the great work. Um, I know I'm not your favorite guest because you said your dad, rightfully so, was your favorite yeah, guest. Yeah, that's, that's tough to, to beat. It, I'm glad to hear it. He's a great man. And shout out to him because he's doing a great, he oh, did a great job raising you and uh, a great show you. for sure, man. So keep up the great work. Thank person. you. We'll have you more on, Mark. So you might, you might end up being my favorite here. Second favorite. Second, <laughs> second. favorite. I'll, I'll aim for that. I'll aim for that. Awesome. Well, thanks for being on with me again, man. I appreciate it. You've been listening to Streams of Income with self-help author Ryan Rieger. From right here in the Dallas Metroplex, Ryan teaches several entrepreneurial courses and group coaching programs to students all over the world. Be sure to listen next week at the same time for Streams of Income with Ryan Rieger.